you're not, that means there's going to have to be more. We thank you for exponential growth. We thank you for multiplication of lives, the 30% increase in every way, the 30% in growth, in, in personal growth, in the development of us as we follow you, Father. But then from that development, everything that you've called us to, it begins to increase supernaturally, and we thank you for it. Good morning, y'all. Welcome to Noon Prayer. How's everyone's spring rest? Did everybody have a good spring rest? If you can't tell, I'm a little bit darker. I got, like, super sunburned on our fishing trip. It was great. I feel like the disciples, like, when, they, when Jesus said, like, put your net over, because we were catching fish, like, left and right. It was awesome. Super, super awesome. But anyways, my name is Matt. I have the privilege of being on staff here at Choose Life Church. And uh, this is doing prayer, obviously. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to get started. So, Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you, Father, for today. Father, I pray my tongue would be as a pen of a ready writer. I would say exactly what you want said, nothing more and nothing less. In Jesus' name, amen. So, today we're going to be talking about uh, divine health, and the title, if you're taking notes, is It Is Finished. The title is It Is Finished. It Is Finished. The first set of scriptures we're going to be looking at is uh, John 19, 17 through 30. John nineteen seventeen through thirty. John nineteen seventeen through thirty. And again, the title is "It Is Finished." Hallelujah. Everyone there, John nineteen. All right, starting in verse seventeen, it says this: "And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha." Verse eighteen: When they crucified him and two others with him, on one on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and from my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus' his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her and took her in his own, own home. 28. This is where we're really going to sit. We're going to spend a lot of time right here. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things, everyone say all things, were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on a hyssop, and put it on his mouth. 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Everyone say, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. If you're writing notes, I would write this down. It's vital to our lives as believers that we know what Jesus did on the cross, and it covered everything. Never say everything. So there was nothing that there was a um, uh, cue. There wasn't a, hey, I forgot to pay for that disease. I forgot to pay for prosperity. I forgot to pay for joy. I forgot to pay for peace. Everything was covered. When Jesus said, it is finished, it was actually finished. You know, I've heard Pastor Charity say this, and I've heard it you know, said that when Jesus was whipped 39 times, it covered, there's a, in medical science, there's 39 different types of diseases. Every disease can be covered under 39 different type categories. And Jesus was whipped 39 times. So no matter what it is that uh, there, were, there was a diagnosis or whether it's a cold or a flu, everything's covered. And that's a really big deal. Even meditating on it uh, earlier this morning, I was thinking about that. Like there's been times in my life, like recently, where like, I, had a, like, I just had a cough. And it was just annoying. And I was like, what's going on here? Like this isn't something like you don't have to deal with this. And sometimes even like in our natural selves, we can be like, well, it's just a cough. Or it's just a stomach bug. Or I just have a, 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 um, a fever. Or whatever the case is. But it's like you have to understand that Jesus paid for that. You might seem, it might seem small in your eyes, but Jesus, you know, imagine him being up in heaven like, hey, I paid for that. You don't have to deal with that. So whether small or big, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, know that it's covered. And that doesn't just mean um, in your natural body, in health. You know, prosperity. You know, beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul pro prospers. So whether it's uh, health, whether it's uh, spiritually, uh, relationally, financially, r whatever the case is, know that you are supposed to be walking. In, like, I love that Pastor Dean, you know, we, he preaches that here at this house, that you're supposed to be walking in plan A. God's a plan A God. He's not, okay, hey, we'll take, uh, we'll take plan D. No, I have plan A for you. 
Amen. So even uh, next set of scriptures, uh, Matthew 12, 9 through 13. Matthew 12, 9 through 13. And I was like, you know, getting ready for it today. I was like, it's like, you can't, you can't read the Gospels logically. You don't even have to be spiritual about it. Just like reading it logically, you can't read that and be like, okay, it's not God's will that you're healed. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You're like walking in, like he was healing left and right. Like we'll read a set, set of scriptures. I think it's in Matthew, uh, is it Matthew 8 or 13? 15 maybe? I think it's Matthew 8. Yeah, it's like. You read, like, I think it's 5 through 13, he heals somebody. And then 12 through, like, 15, he heals another person. And even, like, when, uh, we'll look at it here in a little bit. When he's on the way to heal somebody else, he heals the woman with the issue of blood. And it was, like, almost on accident. Like, he's walking through the crowd. And we'll read it here in a second. And he's like, who touched me? And his disciples are like, what do you mean? Like, you're in a crowd. Like, what do you mean, who touched me? He's like, no, no, no. Somebody touched me in faith. The Bible says that he felt power come out of him. And there was a woman. We'll, re- we'll read it here in just a second. But um, going back again to, um, what did I say? Matthew 12, verse 9 through 13. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? How ugly is that? They're waiting to catch him. And I love what he answers. Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has, who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Verse 12. Of how much more value... Then is a man than a sheep. Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. 13. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And it was restored as whole as the other. That's amazing. He stretched it out. And it was healed. Know it's God's will. You walk in perfect health all your life. Everyone say all your life. I was talking to some family members a couple weeks ago. And they're my grandparents. They always ask about Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy. And so my grandma was like, um, you know, she's like, how old is Pastor Dean? I was like, well, actually, he just turned 70, 78. And she um, asked, like, man, he's, you know, he looks great for 78. I was like, yeah, he does. And then she's like, um, you know, I don't, she asked, she's like, you know, what, what's he taking? Referring to, like, medication. Yeah, what's he taking? Like, you know, almost like words like, and I don't say this critically, but it's almost hard for the natural mind. If your mind hasn't been renewed to like what the word says, like it's almost like you have to be on something, right? There has to be something, right? Um, you know, I, mean, I was at the gym the other day and it was like, this guy was like gigantic. Like his like biceps were the size of my head. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not intimidated. You know, like, how are you that big? And I got to thinking, I was like, that's probably not natural. Like you have to be on something. But it's, you know, referring back to health, it's like, no, it's just the word. And so I told her that. I was like, no, it's just the word. He's just on the word. You know, and even I was thinking about it, like, um, uh, I think I was talking to Alex. Like, Alex took Pastor Dean's uh, car to, like, to the tire shop real quick. He's like, that thing sits real low. I was like, yeah, it's, like, legit. You feel like, you know, it's like, this is awesome. I feel like I'm in the Batmobile. You know, this is great. And he was, um, I was even talking to my grandparents, same thing. It's like, well, they, um, not my grandparents, but I know, like, older people that, you know, okay, I got to get a different car because this car sits too low because I'm older, right? And it's hard for me to get in and out. It's like, no, that's not God's will. You can drive whatever you want, you know, 70. It doesn't matter. And it's like, that's amazing that. It's like our pastors are walking in plan A. You don't have to be on 85 different medications. And it's like, I didn't know all this, but I was talking to a family member, and they were like, well, they put me on this medication. And then to counteract the um, side effects of this me- the medication they put me on, i got to take two more or three more. And I'm just thinking, like, that doesn't seem right. You know, like, I'm not, like, super smart, but I'm thinking to myself, like, that kind of seems like it's kind of, they're kind of playing you. You know, like, I, again, I'm not, I don't know all the ins and the outs of it, but, you know, I've heard Evangelist Jonathan say it like this. He says, you're not an asset to the pharmaceutical companies. You're not an asset. I'm not just there to make money off of me, and they, they get you to live till 80, you know, and you're, you know, breathing out of tubes. That's not God's will for your life. You know, I, heard, I was listening to Brother Hagen. He says that, you know, it's not God's will that you die on your deathbed in, 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 in sickness or ill. No, you go when you're ready to roll. You know, Brother Hagen was like, he, you know, he, he, all right, I think he was in his 80s, and he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. That's God's will for your life. You know, I firmly believe it'll be in our lifetime that we're not going to see natural death. Like, going, everything going on in Israel, and I was watching a video by Reverend Joe Morris, and it's like, man, things are, you know, and you guys just mentioned it in the men's class. Like, we're kind of wrapping things up here pretty quick, um, which is amazing. It's like, wow, we're going to see Jesus part the clouds, and we're going to get out of here. Like, let's, you know, let's rock and roll. You know, not, um... Not an escape mentality, but like in a sense, like, you know, Reverend Joe Moore says, like, he uses the analogy, like, in sports in, in the fourth quarter, uh, in football, like, if the quarterback's not looking at the clock, you got problems. It's like, you need to look at the clock, dude. Like, we got to rock and roll. And you got to be, I was you know, even hearing that, um, watching that video the other day, I had to check myself, like, hey, we got to get some things in order here pretty quick. We don't have much time. 
So with uh, natural health and everything, like you're supposed to be prosperous in every area of your life, and that includes health, perfect health. Amen. Amen. Um, Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Actually, I think it's verse 5. I apologize. Matthew, yeah, 8, 5 through 13. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I, I just love that. He's so great. He's like, yeah, I'll come. No problem. Like, we're, like, our, like, he, he's, like, he's in the healing business. We don't have to, like, plead and beg. Like, no. And Pastor Faith mentioned it during LBL. Like, he has a whole world in his hands. Right. It's like we all sang that song, like, you know, Bible, or, like, you know, Planet Kids, like at Raymond. Like, I remember we would sing that thing all the time. It's, like, ingrained into your mind. But it's, like, you know, if he has a whole world in your hands, do you think he's tripping out about uh, cancer? Right. You know, I even, I, was, uh, I watched a YouTube short recently, and um, the, the, the short was, like, the guy was showing, like, his dad had been diagnosed with cancer, and he'd wrote a song, like, in a sense, saying goodbye to his dad. And it marked me, and I was like, that's not right. You shouldn't hear cancer, especially as believers. We shouldn't hear cancer and be like, oh, that's a death sentence. Right. It's like, no, my dad's in the healing business. That's what he does. Going back, you know, Jesus said, if I've, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And like, like what I said earlier, you can't read the Gospels and go but 20 scriptures and Jesus healed somebody, and then he healed somebody, and then he healed somebody. And it's like serious stuff. Like, somebody's blind, a withered hand, leprosy. If you were a leper, like, in biblical times, like, you were literally sent out, like, exiled. And so, like, a leper, like, a, where everyone that has leprosy goes into this part of, like, the village, like, super far away, and you can't come back until it's gone away, if it goes away. And this guy, and Jesus was, like, healing, like, hugging people, like, oh, yeah, no problem. Like, what you got? You know, like, he's not intimidated by that. So you shouldn't hear cancer or the flu or whatever illness from, like, the devil, like, comes from you. It's like, no, my, my father's in the healing business. That's what he does. Amen. Amen. So picking up again in verse 7. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I just love that. Super simple. I'll come. No problem. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Verse 9, for I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 10, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. Everyone say he marveled. I don't know how many times, but I know it's not very frequently where Jesus marveled. Like this guy, he's like, he kind of floored Jesus like, golly, this guy has a lot of faith. And said to those who followed, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Imagine being in the presence when he says that. It's like, wait, I'm an Israelite. Like, you know, what about me, you know? And it's like this guy who's a centurion. He's a Roman. He's not even, at this point, he's, um, he's, not even, like, he's not even, in a sense, considered like a child of God. He's not an Israelite. He's a Gentile. He's, you know, he's a Roman. He's not even of that. And I like what he said earlier. He said, I'm not even worthy that you come to my house, which, understand, we're under a new covenant. We're under, a, you know, under the blood. So it's like, no, I'm like, that's mine. Well, we're going to read the verse here in a little bit, but the, Jesus says, healing is the children's bread, which means it's yours. Everyone say, it's mine. it's mine. You don't have to beg for it. You don't got to plead for it. You don't got to work for it. No, it's, it's mine. I'm just healed. That's what I am. That's what I am. I'm healed. Everyone say, I'm healed. I'm, healed. I'm whole. Amen. Verse 10 again. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. He's rebuking them. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 13. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. I like that. I'm gonna, I was going to use this um, later on, but I'm going to go and read it right now. Perspective is everything. Everyone say Perspective is everything. How you see it is how you'll call it, and that's how you'll have it. Pastor Charity says this. She says, your, world, your words frame your world. So be very mindful of what you're saying. Be very mindful of what you're speaking out of your mouth. You know, I was even, um, I was talking with some, some people on staff, and we were talking about, like, confession and stuff like that. It's like, I don't, I know enough to know that, like, I'm not going to say, like, I'm sick or, like, I'm dying or, like, you know, I'm hurting. I, I'm not going to say that, but I even caught, and Pastor Kathy's told us before, like, don't say I'm tired. And I heard that, I was like, I kind of say that a lot. Like, that's not, that's not that's something I should say. You know, which we, we say it lightheartedly, but at the same time, it's like, what you see is what you'll have. That's right. So when you see a diagnosis, when you see, and that doesn't have to just be with you, you know, especially when it concerns uh, maybe a family member or a loved one, be very mindful of what you say. 
you know, I got rebuked the other day. I was like, I think, uh, not rebuked, but like, correct. I think I told Laura, I was like, man, I'm, like, I'm exhausted. And she's like, why would you say that? I was like, you right? <laughs> you right? <laughs> totally right. Yeah. Which that's a different extreme. That's a, that's a different, um, I didn't say something as far as like, you know, I, you know, a bad confession. But it's still, it's like, I shouldn't say that. That shouldn't, that shouldn't come out of my mouth. Yeah. Again, that statement. How you see it is how you'll call it. And that's how you're going to have it. So where were we? Verse 12. Or wait. Yeah. So, uh, verse 13 again. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So, good news. Jesus is in the healing business. Hallelujah. He's in the healing business. That's what he does. He heals. Amen. Amen. Verse 15, or excuse me, Matthew 15, 21 through 28. This is where Jesus said, healing is the children's bread. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon, 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. She knew who he was, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. I'm not, I'm, not I'm not a parent, but I can imagine as a mother or a father, like, your daughter is in trouble. This is not a good situation. Severely demon-possessed. She's desperate. 23. But he answered her not a word. I was reading that again this morning, and I was like, dang, that's kind of tough. You know, Jesus is like, man, like, I'm kind of desperate here. Like, you would, you would have thought he would have responded. He doesn't say anything. But he answered her not a word. He probably doesn't even acknowledge her at this point. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she cries out after us. 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 25. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dog. She ca- he calls her a dog. To throw it to the little dogs. 27, she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Man, that's powerful. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So again, Jesus, again, he's in the, he's in the healing business. Next, next set of scriptures, Matthew 8, 1 through 4. When he'd come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Let's just stop here for a second. He said, if you are willing. It's in, uh, Pastor Faith was talking about this um, earlier today in LBS. She's like, it's so valid that you know the word. She was talking about having a good foundation. And healing's like part of the foundation. That's part of, that's what we believe. It's not a hit and miss thing. It's not a... Hey, I'm going to throw up a Hail Mary prayer, which if you don't know what, what a Hail Mary is, like in football, a Hail Mary is like last play of the game, we have two seconds left, and we're like a long way from the end zone. You throw a Hail, Hail Mary, which all it is, it's like a wish and a prayer. We're just going to throw it up there and hope for the best. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I've seen some games where it's like, wow, that was awesome. And it's like this really exciting thing, but it's like that was like one in a million, dude. Look, let's just be 100% honest here. That wasn't skill. It was complete luck. You know, and it's like, you know, sometimes it works. I remember, like, playing sports, and it's like, you know, Hail Mary was, like, kind of the worst thing. It's like, dang, we're down by four. We can't kick a field goal. We're just going to throw a Hail Mary. And that's a horrible feeling to be in because, you know, it's like this isn't skill. This isn't luck. This isn't, you know, you're going to throw it to the tallest guy and pray to God it works. Yeah, it's, it's a long shot at, at best, you know, at best. But going back to the set of scriptures, you know, it's, healing is not a Hail Mary. As a child of God, Jesus said it is a children's bread. You're not throwing up a prayer and hoping it gets past the ceiling and think, Father, please heal me. Please heal so-and-so. Please heal. No, that's not how it is. Healing is the children's bread. And Pastor Faith mentioned again uh, this morning during LBI, she said, it's so vital you know the word. What does the word say? If you don't know the word, you don't know the Bible says, you know, healing is yours, you're going to see, see it as a toss-up. You might go to plan B or plan C or plan D where you're going to a doctor and like, hey, give me all you can, right? It's okay, we're going to give you 85 medications and we'll get you two more years of life at best. And it's not even two years of life. It's like you're on medications, you're breathing through a tube. That's not, that's not living. You weren't made to, you know, be a, a vegetable on a, on a bed being fed with tubes. Like, that's not, that's, not, that's not God's best. You know, and I don't say this in a critical way, but you have to, under, you have to see that as, like, as that. That's not God's best. And you have to desire God's best. Amen. So, again, uh, verse 2 again. And behold, a leopard came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 3, then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, watch this, I am willing, be cleansed. What did he, what's the first thing he did? He had to correct his thinking. That's the first thing he had to do. He had to correct his thinking. He said, Lord, if thou willing, Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. Amen. And immediately, everyone say immediately. 
his leprosy was cleansed. Again, leprosy, it's, uh, you know, I remember seeing like pictures of it like in school and it's like, this isn't, this isn't great. This isn't, you know, and again, you know, you, how you see something is how you'll call it and how you'll call it is how you'll, has, is how it's going to be. Again, your words frame your world. So if you're just seeing like, yeah, this person has cancer and they say it's, uh, it's term, it's terminal and it's, they only give you two years. Like, no, don't, don't let any of that stuff come out of your mouth. How you see it is how it'll be or how you see is how you'll call it and how you'll call it is how it's going to be. So again, verse three. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And again, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Verse 4. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer that gift that, that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So again, before Jesus could heal him, he had to first correct his thinking. It's vital we know healing is ours. Amen. Mark 5, 21 through 43. Quite a few scriptures here, but we're going to take time to read it. Again, 20, Mark 5, verse, starting in verse 21. Now, when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. What, you, what, what I noticed, like a lot of these times, people are desperate. They're desperate, like, help me, please help me. And even like when we go to outreaches and stuff like that, it's like people are desperate. For healing, they're desperate to know, like, hey, I need, I need help. Desperate for salvation. I mean, just, just tormented. Like, I was talking to somebody the other day, and it's like, man, life just, Pastor Kathy, please forgive me, but his life just sucks. And it's like, I told him, like, like no, it doesn't have to be like that. Life doesn't have to be living check to check. Medication to medication. Doctor appointment to doctor appointment. That's not how it's supposed to be. You know, beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. What's your soul? Mind, will, emotions. Peace in the mind. You know, it's like, I, I was, you know, I'm, you know, I'm delivered from YouTube shorts in Jesus' name. But it's like, you can't go five shorts without somebody talking about depression or anxiety. I'm like, this is like, this is, this is BS. That's not, they're, that's what they're, you know, pushing on everybody. It's like, well, you have anxiety, you have depression. It's like, no, in Jesus, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Mind, will, emotions. So picking up in verse 22, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, at the, at, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. 24. So when Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. So this is a bad situation. 12 years, she's not getting better. She actually grew worse, and now she's broke. 27, and when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if, you only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Going back to, to that statement from earlier, how you see it is how you'll call it, and that's how you're going to have it. So she saw herself getting healed, and she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. That's where her faith was. If I can just touch him, I don't got to talk to him. I don't got to plead with him. If I can just touch him, I know I'm going to be made well. Again, how you see it is how you'll call it. And that's how you're going to have it. 29, immediately, everyone say immediately. The, found, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Verse 30, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? So again, being, imagine being one of the disciples. It's like there's a ton of people around you. And you mean to ask us, who touched you? 31. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? 32. And he looked around to see who, who, he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Understand this, that if in, in biblical times under the law, if you, were, if you had a disease like this, you weren't supposed to be out in public. So she's already risking death. Just being like out in public. But you have to, in, in a sense, if you look at it from, like, in, from her perspective, she's like, I'm dying anyways. At this point, what do I have to lose? She was desperate. 32, and he looked around to see who, who, her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. 34, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So he just healed this person on the way to heal somebody else. 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? So just give some backstory real quick. The woman, the daughter, the girl he was on his way to heal 
he stops for a second, and then he gets word right after he heals this other lady that, hey, this, this girl's dead. 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. So what's he doing again? He's correcting his thinking. He says, don't get in fear, don't get in doubt. Do not be afraid, only believe. And Pastor Dean said it to, or in LBI today. Um, he's like, it's so simple. He's not asking you to do anything else. He said, like, just believe. Everyone say, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Pastor Charity said it the other day. She said, even though he had 12 disciples, he still had his top three guys, Peter, James, and John. 38. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. 39. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. So imagine being in the natural. You're like, what are you talking about? She's not sleeping, bro. She's dead. But again, how you see it is how you'll call it. And how you'll call it is how you'll have it. Perspective, perspective matters. Verse 30. And they ridiculed him. But when he, so at this point, he's like, all right, I'm not dealing with you guys. Just get out. Get out. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entered where the, where the child was lying. 41. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kami, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 42, immediately, everyone say immediately. immediately. The girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years old of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. 43, but he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and said that something should be given to her to eat. He's not even like moved by it. He's like, hey, it's, it's fine. In the sense, like he already knows what's coming. She's, she's fine. He told, him, he told him earlier, she's not, she's not dead, she's sleeping. Gets all the doubt and unbelief out. He raises her from the dead. He's like, hey, get her something to eat. She's probably hungry. Not even moved by it. A uh, few last set of scriptures right here. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Talking about Jesus the Messiah right here. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took all of that on for us. And that's a big deal. You know, I believe it was like last year, Pastor Faith had talked about, um, she just told a story in single life. And she was talking about like, um, like, when, like when, that, when that point came, she like, the, the way the story, she told the story, she said that, Imagine being like in a, a negoti- or an interrogation room, which in the movies are like super dark and they're like kind of scary, right? You know, I remember like in The Dark Knight, which is like one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, he gets like the Joker's in there, right? Turn the lights on and he's like, you know, trying to interrogate him. She's like, where is she? You know, and he's like, you know, swear to me. It's like, anyways, The Dark Knight to me is like one of the all-time favorite movies. But bottom line, what I'm trying to say is the interrogation room is kind of scary, right? And the Joker's like making like, you know, he's not taking anything seriously. But imagine that interrogation room without Batman or the Joker. But it's the Trinity, The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the enemy's accusing. Hey, Matt did this. They're looking at each other as a unified front. We got that. Hey, this sickness is a thing because of sin. We got that. Everything was covered by the blood of Jesus. Going back to, you know, 39 lashes. The Bible says, I I think, it might have been New King James when I was reading. It was 40 lashes minus one. If I understand correctly that they couldn't do 40 lashes because they died by the lashes. It was like against the law. It was um, froth or something like that, frog, something like that. So it was 39 minus 1. And again, like I said earlier, I Googled it, and I, I know I've heard it before, but it's like every disease, every illness can be under 39, 39 different categories. And it's like, you know, you don't have to be super smart to think about it, but it's like that can't be a coincidence. Whip 39 times. And there's that scene from The Incredibles where, like, the teacher, like, catches flash. He's like, coincidence? I think not. You know, but it's like, it's not a coincidence. 39 lashes. Everything was covered. Hallelujah. Verse 5 again. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last script, you are. And if you are, you is. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, I was typing that earlier. I, it took me kind of a while because Pastor Dean has a way with words. I was like, is that right? And I was like, wait, let me think about this. Like, it literally took me like five minutes to like, think about it all the way through. I was like, I don't want to misquote him. But again, the statement, the quote there, if you were, you are, and if you are, you is. I want to say this really fast. Pastor Dean mentioned during LBI, 
and uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. The acronym was HAS, H-A-S, Half-Ass Success. And I just thought about that, and I was like, I don't want a half-A life. I don't want a half-A health, half-A prosperity, half-A. It's like, no, I want all of it. I want the whole thing. You know, we, were, uh, we stopped at a barbecue place called Cooper's on the way to the fishing trip. And it's kind of cool. You get like a gigantic tray and you go to the, bar- the pit and they're like, what do you want? I was like, what kind of question is that, bro? I want all of it. Like, what do you mean? And he looked at me and I was, he's like, you want all of it? And I was like, well, not literally, but yeah, I want, I want to try the sausage. I want the ribs. I want the chicken. I want the brisket. I want all of it. Right? And then I, you know, got it and it was like a hundred bucks. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, okay, well, you know, whatever, you know, I wanted all of it. So I got all of it. And then, you know, it, this has nothing to do with anything, but. We get there, and then Brandon's like, what are you doing? I was like, what do you mean, what am I doing? He's like, you didn't get it, uh, you didn't get it dripped? I'm like, the heck, what does that mean? He's like, yeah, you got to get it dripped. They put it in the sauce. They literally grab your piece of meat, and they dip it in the sauce so it's covered in sauce. And I'm like, bro, nobody told me that. So I went, I got out of line. I went back. I'm like, I would like this thing dripped. He said, no problem. You know, but what I'm trying to say, why well, I said that story was this. I want all of it. Yes. I don't want to live a mediocre life. You know, and you got to check yourself. I'm like, I'm checking myself like, man, I got to make some adjustments here. You know, not, not out of fear, but it's like, I don't want to go stand before my father in heaven. And he's like, why didn't, you know, I don't want to hear anything outside of well done. Good and faithful servant. I, I, that's, that's it. That's the bottom line. That's the MO. That's it. I, I want to get up there and well done. Perfect. That's it. And health. I want all of it. Prosperity. I want all of it. You know, I was talking to somebody last night and he was, you know, he was having issues in his, in his finances. And so, you know, he brought it up before I could, I could even ask him. And he's like, well, I'm not tithing. Here's your problem. That's your issue. And I told him, I said, I say this out of love. But he's like, you know, uh, he's like, I'll just start where I'm at at 3%. I was like, that's not, that's not how it works. You don't negotiate with God. Hey, I'll start at 3%. No, the tithe literally means 10%, tenth. So I told him, and I was like, hey, if I were you, and he's like, what would you do if I, you were in my position? I said, if I were you, I would do whatever I had to do to make sure I made that 10%. Minimum. Minimum. So that's whether you cut your Wi-Fi, you cut your cable, you cut internet, you, whatever, whatever it takes, I'm making that 10%. Whatever it takes. You know, and I told him, I was like, you know, he has some financial issues. I'm like, bro, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Been there, bro, got it. I said, you know, I think part of my saving grace was I never stopped tithing. I never stopped giving offerings. And even earlier, I was, you know, I was, uh, you know, I believe in God. I want, I want to be able to give more. So I had some money coming to my hands. I'm like, perfect. I said, see you today. Also, see tomorrow. Like, you know, Pastor, Pastor Greg says that when you keep sowing, you just keep reaping. It's a perpetual harvest. Pastor Kathy said that a tsunami, a tsunami of prosperity, yes. saturated. Hallelujah. 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 First Peter two twenty four. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. And again, that quote from Pastor Dean: If you were, you are, and if you are, you is. You were healed. Refuse to have a half A life, half A success. No, I want all of it. Yes. Hallelujah. Well done, good and faithful servant. I was listening to Brother Hagen this morning, and um, I'd heard the story before, but you know, it just it kind of just rejuvenated me because he was talking about um, he was talking about you know uh, at one point he told a story. He said that he was um, I think he was on like a, a, a he was traveling and he was in a, he was staying in the parsonage of, of the ministry he was going to be at the church he was going to be preaching for, and he said that in the middle of the night. Excuse me. He said it was 1.30. He said he knew it was 1.30 because he could see the clock at night. He said in the middle of the night he was woken up, and the enemy was feeding lies to him and put symptoms on him. And he said that, um, if you know Brother Hagen's story, just very quickly, that he was healed of an un- incurable blood disease. He was like, I think 15, they told him, like, you're going to die. And he just got a hold of, you know, Mark 5, I think it's Mark 5, 23 and 24. And he got a hold of that, and he was healed, like, of an un- incurable blood disease. So he said he's in the, wake, gets, gets woken up in the middle of the night, and the enemy tells him, you're not going to get healed this time. You're not going to get healed this time. You're going to die. You're going to die. And Brother Hagen said he, you know, he felt the symptoms, and he said that he just started laughing to himself. And he talks about there is such thing as, like, getting joy in the Holy Ghost, but he said this time he just did it out of, naturally. He said, I didn't feel like it. I didn't want to do it, but I just did it to show, like, in a sense, to prove to the devil, like, you're not going to get me. So he said he starts laughing, ha, 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 ha. And he said he's not feeling it. It's strictly in the natural. So he keeps laughing. And the enemy goes, what are you laughing at? And Brother Hagin says, I'm laughing at you. 
And the enemy says, what are you laughing at me for? He says, you said I'm not going to get healed this time. And the enemy goes, yeah, that's right. You're not getting healed this time. So Brother Hankey said he starts laughing again. Ha, 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 ha. He keeps laughing, keeps laughing. He said he must, he must have laughed for 10 minutes. And the enemy comes back to him again. He says, what are you laughing at? He said, I'm laughing at you. He said, why are you laughing at me? He said, you said I'm not going to get healed this time. And the enemy goes, that's right. You're not getting healed this time. You're going to die. They're gonna, uh, you're not, you're not going to make it. You're not getting healed this time. And he started, he started laughing again. So finally, the enemy comes back to him. He says, what are you laughing at? He said, I already told you. Mr. Devil, I'm laughing at you. He said, why are you laughing at me? He said, you said, I'm not going to get healed this time. And he says, that's right. You're not going to get healed this time. You're not going to make it. You're not going to get healed this time. You're going to die. You're going to die this time. He said, he busted out 1 Peter 2.24 and he read it to him. He said, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. He read the scripture. He said, he, you would have never seen somebody scurry out of the way so fast. He took the symptoms, took, took the lies and left. By your stripes, you were healed. Pastor Charity says this. She says, you don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. And you see that in scripture. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, how did he respond each time with with temptation? It is written. It is so vital we know what the word says. And, you know, you ne- Pastor, Pastor Faith said that earlier today. She says, you never stop. You never stop. There isn't a point where you reach where it's like, okay, I know all of the word. No, I want to keep going after it. Yeah. What does the word say? Hallelujah. So we're going to pray over you know, specifically divine health. But again, you know, uh, that verse, beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Every area, health, spiritually, financially, relationally, whatever the case is, you walk in, perfect, in, in the perfect will of God for your life. And it's not half a success. No. Like I told that guy at the barbecue pit, I want all of it. Amen. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for today, Father. We thank you for the word we heard, Father. Father, we thank you for your word and how precious it is. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us. The blood that was spilled on Calvary on our behalf, that we would walk in perfect health all the days of our life. With long life, you shall satisfy satisfy us. Hallelujah. Father, I pray over each and every individual under the sound of my voice and online, Father God, that every cell in our body works perfectly in Jesus' name. From the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, we walk in perfect peace all the days of our life. I rebuke any kind of sickness, disease, illness in Jesus' name because it was already paid for. We're not working for it. We are healed. We were healed. Hallelujah. Perfect health all the days of our life. Father, we rebuke any time, any type of fear, doubt, or unbelief. Only faith in Jesus' name. Only faith. Only believe in Jesus' name. Every cell, every cell, every cell, perfect, working just as it was designed to work, which is perfectly in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the blood that was shed on our behalf. Hallelujah. 
Ira de Rambasso, Carambasa. Shira de Rambasso. Ira de Rambasa. La Dambasira de Rambasso. She Carambasso. La Dambasira de Rambasso. She Carambasa. La Dambasira de Rambasso. She Rambasa. Carambasira de Rambasso. Li Dambasora de Rambasso. Ira Mbasso, Corambasa. Ira Mbasso. La Dambasira Mbasso. She Rambasa Carambasso. La Dambasira Mbasso. She la rambasa kadambasso, ira mbasso karambasa, lira da rambasso, ira da rambasso, ira mbasi rambasso, la rambasso, ki sharambasa, la rambasso, she la da rambasso, ki rambasa, lo rambasa, she rambasso ra da rambasa, she rambasso, ira mbasa, ira da rambasso, ira da rambasso, ki sharambasha, ira da rambasso. Ira da Dambasso, Sira da Dambasso, La Dambasaka Dambasso, La Dambasi Dambasso, La Dambasso, Shira da Dambasso, Ira Dambasso, La Dambasso Corambasa, Lira da Dambasso. Father, we thank you. We walked in the perfect will that you have for each and every one of us that you knew us in our mother's womb, fearfully and wonderfully made. You have the hairs on our head numbered. You have the whole world in your hands. There is no circumstance that is too big, no situation that's too much, no debt that's too much, everything covered. Father, we believe that. When you said it is finished, we believe it was finished. Everything covered. Hallelujah. Irambasura de Rambasa. Shika de Rambasu. Ira de Rambasu. Ira de Rambasu. Ira de Rambasu Corambasha. Irambasu. La Dambasi Dambasu. Shaka Rambasu. La da de Rambasu. She la Dambasura de Rambasu. Irambasu. Shika Rambasu. Lida de Rambasu. She rambasso, la rambasi rambasso, she carambasso, la rambasi rambasso, la rambasso corambasha, e rambasso, e rambasso corambasa, lira de rambasso, e rambasa, la rambasi rambasso, sharambasa cadambasso, e rambasso, plan A, only plan A. Only plan A. Hallelujah. Iram basso corambasa. Shiram basso rambasa. Shiram basso corambasa. Iram basso corambasa. Iram basso rambasa. Shikaram basso. La dambasi dambasso. Ira da rambasso. Ira da rambasso. Ira da rambasso. La dambasi kadambasso. Iram basso. La dambasso, li dambasa kadambasso, li sharambasa. Father, we set our faith with this prayer request that this woman walks in perfect health, healing in her body, Father. Again, every cell in her body would, would, would work perfectly, just as it was designed to work, perfectly. Heal from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. She walks in perfect health all the days of her life. That she would know that it is your will for her life. That she walks in perfect health all the days of her life. That healing is the children's bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She da da rambasso, e rambasso da da rambasha, e rambasso da da rambasa, carambasso, she rambasa, lo rambasi carambasso, e rambasso, la rambasi rambasso, she la rambasso corambasa, li rambas a rambasso, la rambasi carambasso, e rambasso, e rambasa, la rambasi carambasso, e rambasso da da rambasa, li rambasso. Father, right now we think we pray for Vice President Kamala Harris and her husband Douglas that they have strength 
and that Joshua had for Moses, that they have great peace and great wisdom, that they have prosperous souls, therefore prosperous lives and health and wealth, that they have protection from all, all harm. Father, we pray over the Midwest right now that all pastors and spiritual leaders in these states are strengthened with might by his power and their inner man, that the eyes of their understanding are enlightened and they, and they understand the hope of his call in them, that they with all boldness lead and speak with clarity and truth, that laborers are sent into these cities and communities within these states, harvesting souls for the kingdom of God, for each governor that they might be saved, protected, equipped, and bold in standing up for righteousness and truth within their state. Mark Gordon in Wyoming, Jared Polis in Colorado, Michelle Lujan Grisham in New Mexico, Doug Burgum in North Dakota, Greg Abbott in Texas, Christian Nome in South Dakota, Jim Pillen in Nebraska, Laura Kelly in Kansas, Kevin Stitt in Oklahoma, and Kim Reynolds in Iowa. Father, again, we thank you for laborers being sent across your path, that if they're not saved, they would become saved and live righteously, live holy lives before you, Father. We come against any type of demonic agenda, Father, that all things are exposed, revealed, and removed in Jesus' name. Exposed, revealed, and removed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all the churches within these states, Father God, that they would have a surplus of finances, Father, a surplus of finances, a surplus of laborers to do everything you've called each and every one of those churches to do, Father God. Father, we thank you for the pastors and the spiritual leaders in those houses, Father God, that they'd be strengthened in their inner man. Boldness. Hallelujah. Boldness, Father. Father, we thank you for laborers sent out, Father, that the people that are desperate, desperate to know you, Wondering if there's more to it. There is. There's, there's more. There's so much more. That they, that they would know they have a Father in heaven that loves them. That knew them in their mother's womb. That they would make the decision to live for you. To give their life to you. To call Jesus their Lord and Savior. Thank you for laborers. For the time is near, Father, but it's not up yet. Thank you for supernatural energy to keep going. Hallelujah. To run harder. That if we've been on the silence, we would get off the silence and get in the game. To live for you wholeheartedly. To run with everything we have, Father, for you. For your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. E dambasso, la dambasica dambasso, she la da dambasso, sha dambasica dambasso, lira da dambasso, e dambasso, she da da dambasaca dambasso, la dambasi dambasso, she da da dambasso, e dambasso carambasa, e dambasso, la dambasica dambasso, e la da dambasso, she da da dambasa, she carambasa. La dambasica dambasso, she dambasa dambasso, she la da dambasso, e dambasso, e dambasso carambasa, she la dambasi da da dambasso, she dambasso carambasa, Lord ambasha, si dambasso sha da da dambasa, li dambosso corambasha, la dambasaca dambasso, e dambasso, she dambasso, la carambasso. I dambasso la dambassa, lola la lambasha kadambasi, so dambassa, 
Shira de Rambasso, Corambasso. Irambasso, Corambasso. La Rambasso, Irambasso. Shira de Rambasso. Ishara de Rambasso. Hirambasaka de Rambasso. La Rambasira de Rambasso. Irambasso, Corambasso. La Rambasira de Rambasso. La Rambasaka de Rambasso. That believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. They would be healed. Jesus said, and greater works than these will you perform. Greater works than these will you perform. That's us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lo sha dambasi si dambaso la dambaso sha dambasa shi la dambaso karambasa i dambaso shi la dambaso sho koromboso la dambasi shi la dambaso shi dambaso i dambaso la sha dambaso i dambaso i dambaso shi karambaso shi dambaso la dambasi dambaso Li shadambaso karambasa, shi la dambaso, shi dambasa, loko rambasa, shi dambaso rada dambasa, i rambasho, i rambaso, la dambasi karambaso, i rambasho la rambasa, shi dambaso, li karambaso, la dambasi rambaso, la rambasa, shi dambaso. Kira da rambasso, ki di rambasso. Lo sha rambasso, ira da rambasso. La sha rambasso, ki di rambasso. La rambasso, ira rambasso. Shi di rambasso, li di rambasso. Ki sha rambasso. La da da rambasso. Shi la da rambasso. Ka rambasso, ira rambasso. Shi di rambasso. La da rambasso, ki sha rambasso. La da rambasso, ira da rambasso. Shi la da rambasso. Shi di rambasso. Ki shara de rambasso, lira de rambasso, i rambasso, i rambasso, i rambasso, la rambasso, ka rambasso, lira de rambasso, shi rambasso, la rambasso, ka rambasso, li rambasso, li ka rambasso, ra de rambasso, lira de rambasso, i ra de rambasso, ka rambasso, i ra de rambasso, i rambasso, i ra de rambasso. Iran basso kara da dambasa, shi la dambasso kara dambasa, Iran basso, Iran da dambasso, la da dambasa kara dambasso, Iran basa kara dambasso, shi dambasso, la dambasso, shi dambasa. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Bible says that when you, you pray in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up on, on your most holy faith, Jude 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you thinking for the Holy Ghost? Yes. We recorded some videos uh, for the Holy Spirit, and it was just like, you know, it was so amazing to see everyone's testimony. And like the Holy Spirit just like orchestrates this perfect plan. And it's like you get, a lot of times in the moment you're like, okay, like, I mean, I can speak for myself, like, going to Hobbs, like, okay, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but okay, I'll do it, you know, why not? Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, so what you want me to do, I'll do it. And it just turns out, and it's like, in that moment, you don't really see it, you don't really see the fruit of it, but it's like, I'm going to be obedient in this step, and then in this step, and then in this step. And you get, you know, uh, five, five and a half years down the road, it's like, man, Holy Spirit, I know you know this, but you did a great job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit's good, he knows all things. Hallelujah. So we're going to give you guys time to give, or an opportunity to give, excuse me. And uh, call me biased, but I'll tell you right now, this is good ground. This is very good ground. We're going to look at um, two scriptures, starting in Malachi 3. Malachi 3, starting in verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what ways have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. He says tithe and offering. That's right. Tithes and offerings. And again, I don't say this critically, but I was talking to that individual last night, and I told him, I said, I say this in love. The Bible says tithe isn't 3% or what you think you should give. No, tithe means 10th. Right. Hallelujah. 
Verse 9, you are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, bring all the tithes, everyone say all the tithes, all the tithes. into the storehouse. The storehouse is where you're fed. That there, may be, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this. He's, in a sense, he's like, I dare you. Remember being kids and you would tell people that? I would tell people all the, all the time. He's like, I dare you. No, I double dog dare you. No, 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 I triple dog dare you, right? That's what God's saying here. Now try me in this says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be no room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. Now he's making, he's making a covenant. This is, this is a promise. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruits of your ground nor shall the vine fall, fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. I like that in verse 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I've heard it said like this. It's not just what's, what you're, what's not, it's not just that, you know, what you're having to pay out. It's a lot of times it's what's not going out, right? I've heard Pastor Greg say it like this. He says, when you're trying to, if you're trying to fill a, a bag with holes in it, like it's not going to happen. Like you can go try as hard as you can, but it's going to keep coming out. So when you're, and that's, that's, we just read it. When you're a tither, the Bible says that God says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So it's like, you know, going back to what we talked about earlier, but it's like, I'm not spending 600 bucks a month on medications. Not happening. It's not, again, it's not just what you're not having to pay. It's, it's like, what's, it's not going out. That's, if you're, if that's, you know, whatever the case may be, but it's like, I don't want to spend 600 bucks to a pharmaceutical company. I'd rather take the 600 bucks and put it towards the kingdom. Amen. Next set of scriptures. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 7, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity. Pastor Dean says it like this, if you can't give because you love God, just don't give. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace, everyone say all grace, abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, everyone say all things, may have an abundance for every good work. In abundance. I like that abundance. You got more than enough to live and more than enough to give. What's the next project? I want to give towards that. Let me get in on that. I've heard Pastor Greg say it like this. He's like, when we have projects, I'm going to give towards that. And obviously, you start where you're at, but you should should always have your eyes on, you know, in Pastor D, DSM, the motto, there's more. I can only give five bucks right now, but I'm going to to go. Next time, I'm going to give 10 bucks. And then 20 bucks, then 50 bucks, then 100 bucks. And it keeps going up. And you get down the road, it's like, oh, snap. I'm, get, I'm giving $1,000 offerings like it's nothing. You know? That's a big deal. I remember when I gave my first $100 offering, I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. We're moving up. Then you give a $500 offering. Oh, yeah. I like that. Then a $1,000 offering. Oh, yeah. I like that. It keeps increasing. Hallelujah. Abundance. Everyone say abundance. abundance. Going back. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. More than enough. We just read it, all sufficiency. So if all sufficiency, everything, it's all covered. All your bills are paid, everything's covered, there's no debt. House is paid, cars are paid. I was talking to a person last night, and I was like, there's such a place, and I'm, like, I'm realizing this, like, there's such a place, you don't have to get a loan for a car. You can walk in and buy a $130,000 car, cash. Yes. Pastor Faith met, uh, made the story, uh, told the story during LBI that someone had a really nice purse, and they didn't want to wear it out in public, or use it out in public. And Pastor Faith told her, she's like, if that person... If people that, you know, sell their money or like sell their bodies, right, whether it's uh, pornography or whatever, whatever the case is, and have like 85 of those bags in their closet and not be ashamed of how they got it, then surely, as a child of God, I'm going to rock this thing. Yeah. Got a nice watch? Yep, yes, I do. My father's very rich. Cat on a thousand hills. He walks on streets of gold. All the silver and all the gold are his. Now I'm his, I'm his kid. Whole world in his hands. That's my dad. Very rich. All sufficiency and abundance for every good work. So... If you're sewing, we're going to put the, di- the directions on the screen. If you're in-house, there's going to be an off- uh, envelope in the seat back in front of you. You can just turn that into a, a container we have on the left-hand side as soon as you walk out. And like I said, call me by us, but I'll tell you right now, this is good ground. This is good ground. Hallelujah. Give you guys just a moment if you're filling out an offering envelope. Again, for those of you guys that are online, the... Uh, Ways you can give are, on, are right there on the screen. Tony, giving on the app is so awesome. It's so convenient. Push like four buttons and you're done. Super convenient. Yes, I will pay that 30 cent fee because it was so convenient. It was when we were at that, uh, 
that restaurant and Mario forgot his wallet, like in the car or something. He's like, do you think they take Apple Pay? I was like, I think so. Like, I hope so. I mean, I don't know. I got you if not, but you know, that's so convenient, right? You just, I don't need my wallet anymore. I just go around and boop, super convenient. All right, I'm going to pray over your seed. Father, we love you. Again, we thank you. We uh, thank you for the seed, Father God. We know it is sown into good ground. And we thank you for a hundredfold return on it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us for noon prayer. We'll see you tomorrow again for noon prayer at 12 o'clock. We love you guys. You guys are dismissed.